I'm Nick Butterworth, and this is a Percy the Parkkeeper story called One Springy Day. It goes like this. 97, 98, 99, Percy the Parkkeeper counted. 100, coming, ready or not. Percy's animal friends were ready, all except one. Oh dear, said the fox, where shall I hide? I can see you, hedgehog, Percy called. Found you. The fox stood by the door to Percy's workshop. Oh dear, Percy said not to go in here, but, but, Percy called again. He was getting closer. Three rabbits in my wheelbarrow. Hey, hey, found you. This was too much for the fox. He put his paws over his ears and slipped through the workshop doorway. There must be somewhere to hide in here, he muttered. He stopped by some tall shelves and looked up. I wonder. The fox began to climb the shelves like a ladder. It was very tricky, and it became trickier still when he got his foot tangled up in an old spring. He shook his leg, but the spring stayed put. He shook his leg harder and harder. The shelves began to sway. Oh, get off, the fox moaned. Percy's coming. I need to... Oh, oh, oh. Crash! The shelves tipped forward and emptied everything on them, including the fox, onto the floor. The fox wasn't hurt, but something wasn't right. He felt sticky. Very, very sticky. What was that noise? said a voice outside. Oh no, it's Percy! The fox jumped to his feet and bundled himself into a nearby cupboard, just in time. Is somebody in here? Percy walked into the workshop, followed by all the other animals. He looked at the fallen shelves. Oh my goodness! What a mess! Everything's covered in my very sticky glue. Look, said the hedgehog. He pointed to a line of footprints across the floor leading to the cupboard where Percy kept things he needed for his work. Slowly, Percy opened the cupboard door. There was no sign of the fox. Fox, Percy called softly. Are you in there? There was a pause. No, said the fox. The animals giggled together. Then who can it be, said Percy. I don't know, said the fox. It's definitely not me. Percy chuckled. <laughs> come on, out you come. To everyone's amazement, not only did the fox step out of the cupboard, but so did everything else. All at once, all stuck together. Whoa, said Percy. The animals began to laugh. They laughed and laughed. Only the fox didn't think it was funny. With one foot still stuck in the troublesome spring and the other in a paint pot, he ran from the workshop. Clomp, boing, clomp, boing, clomp, boing. Fox, called Percy. Come back. The animals looked at each other. Oh dear, said Percy. I think he's upset. Outside, the fox was nowhere to be seen. We need a search party, said the owl. No need for that. Look there, said the squirrel. It's a trail of clues left by the fox. Ah, well done, said Percy. Listen, said one of the rabbits. Everyone stood quite still. Clomp, boing. Clomp, boing. Clomp, boing. Aha, said Percy. We'll soon find him. And remember, when we do, no laughing. 
With the rabbits racing ahead, Percy and his friends followed the trail, collecting up all the clues in Percy's wheelbarrow. Phew, I need a breather. Percy sat down on the roots of an ancient hollow tree. Two rabbits ran up to him. The trail has run out. We can't find any more clues. Mm, that's a nuisance, said Percy. It'll be harder to find the fox now. He could be boing. Percy stopped. The boingy sound seemed to come from inside the tree. Percy smiled and signalled for everyone to keep quiet. Hello, fox, he said. There was no reply. Percy went on. Would you like to come out now? Can't, said the fox. Stuck. Everyone tried very hard not to laugh. Let, let's give you a hand then, said Percy. He reached into the hollow tree and found not the fox, but the handle of a bucket. He gave a tug. <coughs> Goodness, you really are stuck. Right, come on, everyone. This calls for some teamwork. Percy and the animals tied ropes and strings to the bucket handle and other bits and pieces that were stuck to the fox's fur. They tugged and they pulled again and again, but still the stuck fox stayed stuck. The badger whispered to Percy, I think it's his bottom. His bottom? said Percy. What's the matter with his bottom? It's stuck to the tree, said the badger. The badger picked up a mop from Percy's wheelbarrow and went to the other side of the tree. I, I, I've got an idea, he said. When I say go, give it one more heave. The badger gently pushed the mop through a split in the tree trunk. Who was that? said a muffled voice. Who's poking my... Take the strain, called Percy. Ready, Badger? Go, shouted the Badger. Percy and the animals gave a mighty heave, and the Badger pushed the mop as hard as he could. With a boing and a howl, the fox came free. Fox flying out of hollow tree, Percy called. Found you. Bump. The fox landed in a heap in front of Percy. He tried to get up, wobbled and sat down again. Oh, my word, said Percy, look at your fur. You need a nice, warm, soapy bath. The fox didn't look happy. And afterwards, Percy went on, we'll all have tea. I've got a treacle tart we can share. Uh, not for me, thanks, said the fox. I've had enough sticky stuff for one day. Percy chuckled. <laughs> Never mind, he said. Tomorrow will be another fine spring day. Please, said the fox, don't mention springs. And that's the end of the story of one springy day. But there is one more picture. There's a picture of the fox after he's had his bath. I hope you enjoyed the story. You can find more Percy the Park Keeper stories on our YouTube channel. Just click to subscribe. Thank you for watching. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.